Lee Wood is one of Nottingham's great sporting heroes, a world champion boxer and a huge fan of the Panthers and Nottingham Forest as well. In this video, he'll tell you about his world title defence later in February, also about his love for the Reds and how he's been following them in the Premier League. Lee Wood, next. Lee, fantastic to, to catch up again. Um, we'll talk about your fight in a, in a moment because I know obviously everybody in Nottingham is getting really excited about that. But I want to start talking about football, which is obviously another of your your huge loves. How much are you enjoying Forrest being back in the uh, back in the top flight again? We're loving it. Um, you know, it's good to have big teams week after week um, coming to the city ground or away as well. Um, disappointment of a night in the cup, but... Um, before them two cup, cup games, we had we've done really well to get to where we have in them two cups in the FA Cup and the League Cup. But um, back of my mind, I was thinking, you know, just focus on the league because we don't want to have a, a little flash in the pan back in the big time, then back down to the championship because you know full well it is a wolf pit down there. And if we go back down, you know, it's not it's not easy to come back up. So um, yeah, we're doing well. It's nice to be back in the big time, and um, hopefully we can stay there. And those league results have have really picked up. I think everybody was was worried around just before the World Cup, but it seems <laughs> as though things have kind of really steadied down and and Forest have found their feet in the in the uh, Premier League. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think it's been seven or eight games, um, especially at home, been doing really well. Um, one of my sponsors, Blueprint, he wraps things like vans and that. So the owner of Forest. Um, got in touch and said, um, you know, we've got this press box and, and it's black and, um, you know, it's it's bad luck. This is this before our run of, of, of success recently at home. So, you know, we want to wrap it red. Um, black's bad luck. And I think there's a tarmac around the pitch as well that was black that's been now changed to red as well. So right. since on that, I don't think, um, you know, with the league, but I don't think we've done too bad. We've had a very good run. Since that box has been wrapped, so it's all down to your sponsor, is it? My sponsor, my sponsor uh, Blueprint, Richard, he uh, he's claiming it, but um, yeah, you know, little things like that can sometimes make a difference, and um, it's crazy, isn't it? Like the amount of time the the, the last what 15, 20 years of following the club, you know, not a lot to scream about, but being back in the Premier League recently, you know, um, having the results like beating Liverpool at home and played well against Chelsea. There's other clubs as well have had some good performances and all we've got to do is keep it up and keep on this this form, especially we've got at home in the league. Yeah, it will stay up now. Yeah, I mean, where are we sat? About 13th, are we? Mm. Um, I think it does all, I know a lot of people have said it, but it does all depend on this form we've got at home. We are a wolf pit at home and the atmosphere, the fans will make a difference. Um, and, you know, we need to pick up a few results away as well, but at the minute we're in a good place. Um, just, yeah, just keep the form, keep the momentum. I don't think there's anyone getting complacent at the at the club. Um, I don't think Cooper is. I think everyone's you know striving and want to get better. Want the like you said, beginning of the year is a brand new team, so everyone's like don't really know each other, and I think they are getting the relationships are getting a lot better with the squad as time goes on. Did as you well think new players? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um... You mentioned the kind of 15, 20 years you've been following. I wonder whether you'd got to the point, I think, you know, some Forest fans had thinking it's never going to happen. You know, the, the Premier League is, is the Forest are, are going to find a way never to get back into the to the Premier League. Yeah, I think because you look at it and you think, well, there's that much money involved up there and they just, the, the, it's like the rich get richer, the poor get poor kind of thing. You know, they get so mm. much money up there to invest back into the souls, getting better players and bigger stadiums. And it's just, it's hard. It's hard to compete with them top six clubs. Um, you know, there's always a way. Um, you know, Leicester showing they came up and, yeah. uh, and won the Premier League. You know, it can be done. And it is down to the team you have and the confidence you can instill in them, the manager, the coaches. Um, it can definitely be done. And it's not it's not as clean cut as more money, better club. It's not. Um making good decisions that's the plays on the pitch and the staff behind doors as well and um, hopefully you know we can stay up there now because we do not want to go back down there <laughs> no in recent years the best the best thing we've had to celebrate is um, 
staying up when we was fighting to step in the championship yeah. moment on the pitch. That was the best we had to celebrate in recent years. So, you know, going down to Wembley and winning the playoffs was incredible. It's quite different for you, isn't it? Because you're, you've obviously got a small team around you um, when you box, but do you do you look at it and think it is this is so different? You know, because when you're in the ring, it's kind of all down to you. If it goes wrong, it's your fault, and there's no doubt about it. If you win, you're the person that takes all the glory. Whereas in football, it's kind of so shared around, isn't it? The manager, the players, the chairman, whatever it is. Yeah, and I, it must be frustrating when you're given a hundred percent in and out of training and on the pitch and at home and make sacrifices and other people are. I'm not saying they are, but I'm saying if that is a case, sometimes that must be frustrating in a team sport. Um, I'd I'd prefer the pressure and have it all on myself because I know I'll be doing everything right, everything I can to get the victory. Um, and in the team sport, you know, a couple of players can have a bad game and you can still you can still win. If I have a bad night, you know, <laughs> get my head punched in. Um, yeah, but that's down to you, isn't it? If you have a bad it, night, that's it, that's it, your it, mistake. Yeah. yeah, but at the same time, you know, I've got a good team and a good coach, and he's like obsessed with making sure I know what I need to be doing on fight night from round one, what I need to be doing, what I shouldn't be doing against certain styles. And he, it, since I've been down here with Ben, I've had my, my my best success in my career, and it's because of the way he operates, and you don't leave nothing unturned you know he's 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 on the ball if he'll say like you can't afford to do this in this fight then the next fight right you can't afford to do this if you do this he's going to do that he's good at this or he's not so good at that so you can explore that but if you do it in these moments that ain't going to work and that's why um that's why i've clicked so well down here with them because it's not as simple as right get you fit get you strong this is kind of fight you need to do this every day i've got videos to watch at night um in the gym today want a hard session this morning but mentally it was draining because I had to do the same thing over and over again practicing certain moments when certain things are coming at me from this certain style I need to be on point with my reactions and I can't be giving him not trying to say too much but I can't be giving him certain shots where he's going to count me with big shots so um, yeah as, as, as much as it is a single man sport when I'm in there a lot of behind the scenes work is a team thing so how different are you as a, perhaps mentally is more than anything, as a fighter now than you were 10 years ago? How how different are you? Three years ago. Really? Incredibly, right. incredibly different. Obviously, you're always picking things up. Um, there's so many areas. So like, for example, making weight. Um, every camp that comes on, I've just picked things up, added to it. But I've done I do my own uh, diet and nutrition. I went to college when I was younger. Um, but it's more experience like in life than anything you can you can learn what you want it's like driving you, you, you learn how to drive you pass your test and then you actually start to learn about the roads and driving when the more you drive it's kind of like that as well so every time you get better and better you add things you take things and um, you pick things up you're always learning same with like my nutrition my diet same with the boxing um, same with like pace accuracy rhythm timing distance all these things is constantly developing um, and then you come down to your and I thought I knew majority of there is to know about boxing and Ben and these lot just flipped it on its head and I'm like, wow, there's so much more to learn. Um, and I'm not even scratch the surface. Did you think, uh, you know, a bit like Forrest, did you think your your chance had gone, your chance at world titles, you yeah. know, without being rude, you were too old yeah. for it, your, your opportunity had yeah. gone? Exactly that. It got to the point where um, I was 30 years old. I remember hit rock bottom, so I was 30 um, and it got to like nearly Christmas time. Loads of things happened in my personal life, like really quite bad. I don't want to talk about it. It was really bad. Um, I was really low. Um, I was on my own over Christmas and New Year. And just at that time, I was supposed to fight for the British title. And um, I seen online that he was fighting someone else. And my, my manager and Jim at the time didn't say anything to me. They just kept saying, oh, something else come up. But it's been that case for a number of years. And I just had enough. I was like, I need to leave my gym. I need to leave my manager. All that stuff gone on my you know, off my personal life. I hit rock bottom Christmas and New Year. I had no money. I was 30 years old. I was thinking, God, I've gave a massive chunk of my life since I was 12 years old up until 30. I've got nothing to show for it. And I'm sat here on my own because of all these things, the mistakes I've made at the time, my personal life and 
I left my gym that I've been at for 10 years, left my manager. I've got no sight of getting to where I wanted to be. It's like I'm 30 years old and that's quite old for a boxer. You know, a lot of people think if you're not wonderful by 30, you know, you're not going to win anything. But um, I made a few changes. I kept with it because I made a promise to myself when I turned pro that I wasn't going to quit, whether that's whether it's fa financial pressure or um, not being good enough, I'll get better. Or not being fit enough, I'll get fit. I made all these promises to myself that no matter what comes or gets thrown against me, I'm going to find a way to do it and I'm not going to quit. Um, so, yeah, that was when I was 30. Then in the March time, you know, I signed with um, Dave Caldwell, new manager at the time for a bit. Um, got the Commonwealth title shot, won that. Then I went on a good run, 2019. Um, then COVID hit. Um, mm. got beat again in a close fight then made the made the move to Ben and come down here and then massive eye open off got a second shot at the British title won that quite convincingly and then um, stayed in the gym I don't know why normally like you go you enjoy yourself after a fight which I did for a week or two but then I was uh, in my head I was thinking right let's get back in the gym because you know I was 33 coming up to th I was 32 coming up to 33 I think and I thought, I just need to stay in the gym. I need to keep improving because I've just won this British title. You know, I could be defending it for, uh, do you know what I mean? Something was telling me just to stay in the gym. Uh, I normally do anyway, but that was quite close to the fight. Straight back in the gym. And then um, we got a call out of the blue. Um, World title fight, five weeks notice. And luckily, like I said, I was in the gym. Um, and my coach said, you can win this fight. You need, you need to do these things. We need to practice these things and show you where and when to do them. But you can win this fight, and then you know, the rest is history. You know, went and won that world title on late notice and defended it in my own city. And I can't thank my team enough because the old me, the way I used to fight, I wouldn't have won them fights. There's no mm. way I'd have won them fights. I mean, I was, I was, I was fit enough, strong enough, punched hard enough, but it's not just about. What, how good you are, them things. It's a lot of in between where there's a lot of little positioning. There's so much more to boxing than I know, and the little things make the big difference. It does it feel like it's all I mean, from that point, you talk about the lowest point, and you know, you're in your 30s at, at that moment. Does it feel like it's always your last chance from that point? As you get older in boxing, it's like if this doesn't go well. <laughs> then that might that might be it for me. Do you know what I, it's a very negative way of looking at it? I know. But do you know what I mean? Absolutely. I didn't really think of it like that. Um, but a lot of people do say like a lot of times it's on your last chance to do it, they do it because the pressure and I don't know, they, they know they can't mis make a mistake because yeah. they do if you want it that much and you know it's your last chance, you'll give everything to to achieve it, won't you? Yeah, pretty much. Um I can't even answer that. Like it's it, it's strange. Um I didn't even have any doubts. My last three fights, I've had no doubts. In this fight as well, no doubts because I don't know, it's just the way I'm coached or every fight now, obviously I've come down here, won the British, won the world at late notice, defended against one of the, arguably one of the best Irish fighters I've ever had skill-wise, double Olympian, you know, beat him. So I should get these wins by doing it a certain way and approaching it a certain way. You kind of get the confidence of like, well, I just won that, and the bookers didn't really think I'd win that. The next fight, I won that, both by knockout, and the bookies had me a massive outside. I think I was like sixty or seventy to one to win in that twelfth round. Right. Um, and even just to win, I was an outsider for them in my last fight as well. So the more people like bet, not bet against me, but the more people doubt me and think there's not going to be that fight, then I come through them fights. It gives me massive confidence in my own team, in my approach to fights, how I do things, my own ability. Um, and obviously I'm getting older, I'm nearly 35, but I'm, I'm, I'm at the best way my experience and my, my physical peak have met. And I've got everything I need to win these fights, especially my team. I'm sure it's not the first time somebody said it to you, but there are so many parallels between you and Carl Frotch, who obviously enjoyed great success in Nottingham as well, in the fact that he, it took him a while to get those opportunities towards the back end of his career and it felt like you know every every big fight that he lost might be his last do you know what I mean and it, it feels yeah, I was, I was a little there. bit similar of course yeah yeah I was there in the, in the um in the stands for a lot of his fights my amateur coach used to take him on pads so he used to take his both on pads at certain gyms and stuff um so many similarities with Carl it's I, I read his book when I was younger and like 
I was reading it, it was frightening. Some of the things like, for example, in the book it says he he wanted to go to Courtney Willows, but because his family went Gedlin, his brother went Gedlin, or his mum went Gedlin, he he got sent to Gedlin, and and he's putting his book that he was crying. That same thing happened to me because I went private junior school, and um, all my friends who stayed around with went Willows, and I was in the area to go Willows, which is strange because it's a really good school. But my mum was like, no, you're going Gedlin, I went Gedlin, like family were going, your right. brother go Gedlin, send you there, and I remember going being at home crying on my bed because all my mates are going there. And it was a real, it's been knocked down now. That's true. The school wasn't great. But um, to read this book, and I'm like, for his date of birth is something like the second of the 77, and mine's like the first of the 838. Um, same same school, uh, same area, same amateur club. Um, there's so many things like similarities, like got the same middle name, and loads of things. It's quite strange to read that book. And obviously, we've both gone on, gone on to win world titles. and you know, similar ages as well. How much are you kind of in touch and, you know, how much does he have to do with you in terms of, I don't know, as a kind of uh, perhaps a mentor or somebody you can talk to at any point if you needed to? Yeah, I don't see him all the time, but when I do see him, you know, we have a chat, we have a catch up, gives me good advice um, on money and stuff as well because he's been there, he's done it, he's invested and stuff. Um, he's, he's a good guy, you know. He is a bit of a wind-up for people, especially online and, and stuff. He and loves it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, some people like him, but um, honestly, like he's he's a sound guy, and I've known him a long time since I was nine or ten. Um, for when he got a medal at the Worlds and came back to the amateur gym where I was at the time, so I've known him a long time. Um, and he's done exceptionally well and paved the way for me because it's been like, well, I've got this on my doorstep. I've seen him come from this amateur club in my school, I've gone on to do that. So if he can do that, why can't I do that? So yeah. Talk to me about this specific fight in in February. Um, obviously, you're defending. What are your what are your chances? Do you do you think? I'm going to win this fight 100. percent um, It's a hard fight. I'm not taking it for granted. But that's exactly why I've been working so hard because I know he's a hard fight. Um, he's the only person to to stop Josh Warrington to win and knock him out. Um, he brings a lot of new challenges this time, new approach. Um, I need to be careful. I can't make any little mistakes because I will pay for them if I do. But at the same time, it's a style that suits my style well and helped me get off what I'm good at a lot easier than my last fight and probably easier than the fight before that. So it's what I'm looking forward to. I'm excited about. Um, one that the fans are excited about because it's it's sold out. There's been a lot of talk about it. I think the numbers will be great for, for the viewing as well on the zone. But yeah, the the main most important thing for me is um the, the support I've got that at the arena, I think we're three or 400 tickets away from a sellout of 9,000. Normally they go at the end of this month. A lot of people get paid at the end of the month. So I'm expecting it to be a sellout in the next few weeks. Um, and it's going to be some atmosphere, you know. My last fight was split between English and Irish, but, you know, the Nottingham lot and a lot of the forest lot made a lot of noise for me. And there was battling between the two fans. But when I came out and the Monarch and Tiger come on, you know, it was just unbelievable. It really picked me up. It literally picked me up after round one when I got dropped as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know? it's, it's difficult to be, and they're there for you. And I think that's the same with Forrest. And all these years at the top flight, the fans have always been there um, supporting. And that's it. Whether you win or lose or get put down or not, they're there. And they're backing you. And they're backing you in all the sports as well. Forest, the cricket, the Panthers, um, myself. And it's good. It's, it's a nice thing for the city to do that all the time. And that arena, I mean, I don't know if you were there for the Froch Boutte fight, uh, whenever that was, some years <laughs> right. ago. That's a funny story as well. So I was supposed to fight on that bill. Um, I weighed in outside oh, in the heat. Right, I don't remember that. I weighed in in the heat, and um, they basically said, uh, we can put you on um, we can put you on an early slot, but there'd be no one in the arena. But what we want to do is we want to put you as a live float. So if there's a knockout, which makes creates a gap, we slip you in, you're fighting, and the arena will be quite full. So they said, um, I'm going to put you in after Carl Frampton, who's fighting Mexican that night, I think. So we're expecting him to win, probably by stoppage, and I'm going to slip you right before Carl, the arena will be full, be great for your profile, local lad coming through. So I was like, yeah, wicked. Um, so the fight started, I warned up a few times, no, 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 it's not going. I warned up again, no, it's not going to go. And then eventually Frampton's fight went the distance. They didn't have time to put me on. So I oh, will put you on after. Froch, obviously, 
incredible fight. There's never going to put me on after that. Um, quite disappointing for me that night. But obviously, Carl got a great victory, unbelievable in unbelievable fashion. Um, so yeah, I remember leaving. I went. I seen Carl at the after party and that, but I didn't want to say I was a bit upset. Obviously, I trained for the fight and that. Yeah. Um, so I went to my friends after that night and um, was there for a few hours. I remember driving home, getting quite late, early hours it was in fact. Yeah, because it was light. And I drove him past McDonald's, I thought, I've been dieting all these weeks, I'm going to treat myself. <laughs> I drove past McDonald's and um, the door was locked and Frotch was in there with his family. Really? Um, <laughs> I think it was early hours. And um, and I, I knocked on the door and called, so I let him in, the door was locked. It let me in and um, I had McDonald's with him and his family. So yeah, it was, it was quite good. So how long after that did you fight? Um, did you have to wait quite, a while? I think it would have been about three or four months, yeah. Wow, okay, quite a, quite a while. But you remember from that night, the atmosphere in there. Unbelievable. Yeah. When you get 5,000 in there, it's loud enough. But if it's full, geez, that's that takes some beating. That's it, yeah. Um, that, it's funny because like all the stadiums, um, out of all the stadiums and all, all, the, all the clubs in the league, I think we've got one of the best atmospheres with the fans all in harmony, joining together and getting behind the teams. Obviously, it's some of the bigger teams. They get a lot of support, but because they've been in that top flight and so much success for so long, a lot of the fans aren't just that local area. They are scattered all over. Like, the Man U fans, I know there's Man U fans, they're not even Man U fans in a lot of cities. Um, so I think it is better when it is that city and they're passionate and, you know, Nottingham chants. And I think it, that is what makes it so good. So when do you fight there? That's the that, that's the obvious next question. Yeah, so, uh, I know you've been talking uh, about it for a while. Is, is it a possibility? <laughs> it's definitely a possibility. Um, a few years ago, I did an interview and I said I wanted to. There's three things I wanted to achieve in boxing. Bear in mind, I was coming off a loss. There was COVID and that, so once many shows, I was I come off a loss. There was a year when I didn't fight and um, things were starting to pick back up. And I did an interview for Knots TV and I said. There's three things I want to achieve in my career. And if someone was sat there listening to them at the time, they probably thought this kid's mental. <laughs> uh, I said, right, I want to, I've got it on my Instagram. I said, I want to win a British title because it's the most beautiful belt in boxing. That's the first belt I held. Mickey Booth, Jason Booth, Carl Crutchers. That belt is, it's, if you don't know, it's, it's real gold, like gold plated and um, it's worth about 13 grand, that belt. Right. So yeah, it's just beautiful. So I said, I want to win the British title. Um, I want to hopefully win box four and win a world title. I must think in this crowd, and this is never going to happen. <laughs> and then I said the third thing is to be the first person to headline at the city ground. So, out of them three things, two of them things I've already done. There's only one more thing left to do. I need to win on February 18th to make it possible. I did think when I won the world title, I'd be at the first ground next, but my profile wasn't big enough. Um, then I thought after the column fight, massive fight, massive win. But at the time of year, I can't just sit around and wait. I've already waited a long time since my last fight, nearly a year in March, because the WBA wanted me to fight manager, then they didn't, then they did. Then I was going to fight Laura in September. Then I got an injury. So um, just the time of things really not lined up. But hopefully February 18th, I get the win. I look good doing it. And then my next fight is at the city ground, all being well. Well, let's hope that happens. I might just dig my heels and say, I'm not going to fight unless it is there. So, <laughs> <laughs> What a fantastic fight that would be as well. Just that you can imagine walking out with Mano Kintyre playing this time, not yeah, for Forrest at the city ground, but for you. It'd be incredible. Even when I go to the games and sing along, you know, you look around, you think it's just, it's so lifting. It is so lifting. And everyone, when they're screaming it, they're just passionate about it. And that's what you want. You want the passion. And I got up my last fight and I think it was about 60 to 70% of Nottingham lot because the Irish had a bit, but this fight is going to be 99.9% of Nottingham faithfuls, a lot of Forest lot, um, and that is going to bellow into that arena and really pick me up. My thanks to Lee Wood and good luck to him for his fight later in February. Now YouTube wants you to watch this video here. I think on the other hand, you'd much prefer this one. The choice though is yours.